Hi, I'm Dr. James Wittig. I'm an orthopedic oncologist and sarcoma surgeon, and I take care of both children and adults who are afflicted with musculoskeletal sarcomas. Sarcomas are cancers that arise from the musculoskeletal system. So basically any children or adult with a bone or soft tissue tumor or bone or soft tissue sarcoma. The mainstay of, uh, of my specialty is really performing limb sparing surgery for sarcomas of bone and soft tissue as opposed to performing amputations. We, we try to save the limb whenever possible, and probably about 95% of the time in the United States, a patient can actually undergo a limb sparing or limb saving surgery, as opposed to needing an amputation for a sarcoma that arises in either the bone or the soft tissues. Now, children and adolescents tend to experience more bone sarcomas and soft tissue sarcomas, whereas adults may experience more types of soft tissue sarcomas than bone sarcomas. Osteosarcoma, which I wanna to talk to you about today, is the most common type of primary bone sarcoma in children and adolescents. It is the most common primary cancer to arise from bone in a child or adolescent or teenager. Most commonly arises between the ages of 10 and 20 years of age. It is an aggressive tumor, it is rapidly growing, and, it's re and it readily metastasizes or spreads. Metastasize means to spread to other body parts. And the most common parts of the body that it can spread to are to the lungs and to other bones. Now, it is the third most common cancer overall in children and adolescents. It follows leukemia, brain cancer, then it's an osteosarcoma. It is, um, it is very curable. If you are, are diagnosed with a conventional osteosarcoma, conventional means most common. So odds are that if you undergo treatment, you are going to be cured. Cells do travel through the, the vascular system and can deposit themselves in the lungs and the other bones, and that's why we check patients when they present to us with an osteosarcoma, we check their lungs and their other bones. The typical sites that an osteosarcoma can arise from include the areas around the knee, the lower femur, the upper tibia, and the areas around the shoulder girdle, the proximal humerus up here, the shoulder. The osteosarcomas themselves usually present with pain and swelling. Many times, since this occurs in a child or an adolescent, they can recall an injury, or it might be attributed to an injury or a sports injury, because many of our children are, are now very active nowadays. And they may often also present with night pain that's sometimes dismissed as, as growing pains. So you have to have a very high index of a s suspicion that a child could have an osteosarcoma if they have pain. It, granted, it is very rare. There's only approximately 600 cases in the United States each year, but it is, should always be considered in any doctor's differential of pain. So if your child has pain in an area, you should definitely bring them to be seen by a doctor, get the medical attention. An x-ray should be taken, and it could be started on whatever is necessary given the x-ray. If the x-ray is negative, they can go to a physical therapist, they can continue with their activities. But if that pain does not get better in, with six weeks of physical therapy, uh, attention should be made toward performing a, an MRI or an advanced imaging study because sometimes sarcomas grow very rapidly on, and cannot be visualized on an x-ray. And it takes an MRI to really see them. So the general rule of thumb is that if a person is thought to have injured themselves, and they're having pain, and the pain does not get better in six weeks, go ahead and get the MRI just to make sure that there's not an underlying tumor or there's not some other mechanical cause of their pain that might require some surgical treatment. What does an osteosarcoma look at, like on an x-ray? Well, I wanted to show you this one case here of an example of an osteosarcoma, conventional osteosarcoma, that occurred in a teenager along the upper part of the humerus. This case was presented on on OrthoBullets, which is an educational platform for orthopedic surgeons and orthopedic residents. And it often presents as a tumor with a cloud-like white density within it. An osteosarcoma is called an osteosarcoma because it is, it's a sarcoma that's actually making bone. 
it's not because it's coming from the bone, but it's making bone itself. So it's a sarcoma that arises from bone that makes bone. Now there are rare examples of osteosarcomas that also occur in the soft tissues that are called extraskeletal osteosarcomas, but the most common occurs in children and adolescents and arises from the bone. And you can, often it's very readily detectable on an x-ray when you see the fluffy cloud-like densities in the soft tissues or in the bone. Patients can also present with a pathological fracture because a tumor does make the bone a little weaker. A child that's diagnosed with this has to be very careful after they're walking around, but can present, 10% of patients will present with a pathological fracture through the lesion. Now, what happens after you're diagnosed with it on an x-ray? Well, it needs to be confirmed on a biopsy, which means a piece of tissue is obtained and it's uh, read by a pathologist, it's looked at under a microscope, and it confirms that it's an osteosarcoma. And what the pathologist will see is a very hypercellular tumor, right? Normally tissues have very little cells in it, but there's a very hypercellular tumor, as tumor with very big cells with very big nuclei, they're spindle cells, which means that they're shaped like cigars. And you'll see these cells laying down bone in between them. And that's, that's how it's really diagnosed on the pathology. Once the diagnosis is made, this, the typical treatment nowadays for 95% of patients is to have chemotherapy before surgery, then have surgery, and then more chemotherapy afterward. And typically, patients undergo what's called neoadjuvant or preoperative chemotherapy for a couple months before they actually undergo the surgical procedure. 95% of patients nowadays can be treated with a limb-saving surgery as opposed to needing an amputation. So the tumor is separated from the neurovascular structures. Any important tissues that can be retained within the extremity are retained. And often the extremity is reconstructed with a metal type of prosthesis that's almost a medical replica of the bone or, and or the adjacent joint. The way the prosthetic replacements are made nowadays is that I could actually assemble the actual size on the operating field, put it all together and test it in you and trial it in the patient and then build the final one actually in the OR rather than having to have a custom made component. There are still times when I need a custom component but most of the time, for the most common presentations, we can build it right in the OR. And then once, they, once the surgery's finished, usually within, within two to three weeks afterward, they resume chemotherapy for probably another four cycles or four months of chemotherapy. So maybe the whole process of treatment is nine months. But again, it's very curable. Patients who present without any, sort of, any evidence of metastatic spread of the disease, um, they're much more likely to be cured than not cured. And even patients who present with metastatic disease to the lungs can be cured also, which is different than a lot of other cancers. A lot of other cancers that spread, you, you can't be cured, but you can only be put in remission. The typical chemotherapy agents used for an osteosarcoma include cisplatin, adriamycin, and hydrosmethotrexate. And it's pretty much a standard protocol that's utilized throughout the United States by all the pediatric oncologists who take care of children with these conditions. And everybody seems to participate in, an, in a national protocol, or let's say it's more or less a recipe for treatment. The prognosis is great. After we remove the specimen, we do analyze the specimen and see how much of the tumor was killed by the chemotherapy. And if you happen to hit 90% of chemotherapy killing effect in the tumor, we know you have a slightly better prognosis. If you don't hit that 90%, you still have a good prognosis. It's better, you know, you're still more likely to be cured than not cured, but having that sort of better response to chemotherapy does boost you a tiny, a tiny bit there. What happens afterward? Well, after you're done with your treatments, we monitor you periodically with x-rays of the extremity and CAT scans of the chest or chest x-rays periodically over the course of five years. And once you hit five years, you can be pretty sure that you're cured. You know, 90, 98% of people, once they hit the five-year mark, are likely to be cured with no evidence of disease returning in the future. We monitor the, the extremity with x-rays because we want to pick 
up any tumor that potentially comes back. So although, you know, limb sparing surgery is safe compared to an amputation, there's still a local recurrence rate, meaning in the extremity where you resected the tumor, a local recurrence rate of five to 10%. And that's actually, you know, an amputation doesn't guarantee you that the tumor doesn't come back in the amputation stump either. Because sometimes these tumors send out cells at a distance from the main tumor. So there's still a little bit of a local recurrence rate in the actual, in an amputation stump. Nowadays though, 95% of patients can have their limbs spared. And we usually reconstruct the extremity, like I said, with a metal prosthesis that's almost a medical metal, metal replica of the bone in the adjacent joint. So please, if you suspect your child or a teenager is having pain, they should, you should bring them for medical attention, to bring them to a doctor. They should have their extremity x-rayed where they're having the pain. And if the x-ray is negative, maybe they start physical therapy. But if that pain does not get better in six weeks or so, they really need to get an MRI of the extremity and advanced imaging modality and to rule out any sort of, sort of neoplasm or sarcoma or osteosarcoma. Thanks a lot, everybody.